Welcome everybody to our show. This is Custom Fab Garage on our channel Octane TV on YouTube. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. And on top of that, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get all the new content that comes out weekly and even every day. Getting ready to do this 2014 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Going to remove the factory radio and we're going to be doing a Sony Double Den touchscreen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This is the stock radio before and it's already um, having problems and not turning on correctly. First step we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here, we're gonna pull that bad boy off, not that hard. We're gonna pull this off. That's how it unclips right there. We're gonna set that over here. And then right under here, you're gonna have a seven millimeter. And right underneath here, you're gonna have a seven millimeter. Seven millimeter. Next step, we're gonna take our plastic pry tool and we're gonna pry this bad boy out right here. You take your plastic pry tool and get it out. You're gonna get behind here and there is a red clip right here but you will have to take this clip, and I don't have much of a nail anymore, so I broke that bad boy off. So on this side, you're gonna pull this part out, just push that part out, and then you can take this and then clip it and then unplug, and boom. And then you have this taken out, push that plug back back there, and then there's a seven millimeter right there. Tip is we're gonna pull this piece right here out, and then you're gonna set that over here to the side, and you're gonna have a seven millimeter right there. Okay, now that we've removed this seven millimeter, this whole dash is gonna come off. Um, you'll want to probably drop this bad boy all the way down, and then it's gonna just pop off. And it's gonna come off as one big piece, just to let you guys know. And be careful when you're pulling on it, you don't wanna break anything, so just be real careful and make sure that everything's unplugged out of the stock radio if you care about it. And then this whole piece is just gonna come off as one big piece. There's what it looks like when it's removed off bunch of clips when you pull it out of there and then here is the front when the dash is removed you can kind of get to everything our biggest obstacle is getting the radio out We've got four seven millimeters we're going to remove all those to get this radio out make sure you want to hit the eject if you have any uh, cds in your radio you want to take those out beforehand as well radio is out now we're going to remove this plug this plug and this plug so you got three plugs total that you're going to have to take out of here here's your main plug XM and antenna. So those are the three plugs that you're gonna have to use on this. 90% of the time when you can tell it's amplified is when these four speakers are by themselves and they don't have four more down there. That's how you can usually tell if it's amplified or non-amplified. If you see eight, it's usually non. If you see four, it's usually amplified. That will tell you that. This actual vehicle is amplified as well. And it does have steering wheel controls on the back side here. So you do have both of those. So we're gonna retain the steering wheel controls and we're going to retain the factory amplification. Next step, we're gonna remove this seven millimeter and this seven millimeter and take this metal bracket out of the back. So we removed that. If you want something that's easy to use, I just use like a right angle like this so you can get into the dash back here and just remove those because it's hard because you can't get a drill through there. Um, that's what the dash looks like now that we've removed everything. So you got plenty of room to put the double den in there. And that's what it looks like when it's removed. These are the parts we're going to be using today is an XAV AX5500 from Sony, very similar to the 5000 and also the 5600. So they basically make three models in the 5000 series right now. It does do Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Also, we're going to be using the Crux DKCR-59K. This is an all-in-one unit that basically comes with a wiring harness, dash kit, everything. Um, I don't believe it comes with an antenna adapter, so we're going to need a 40 EU10. Um, for an antenna adapter from Metra, I will also put the link to the antenna adapter in the description below on the bottom of this video. So just look underneath the video in the description. I will have links to Amazon for every part that we use and 
We will also have the Skosh and Metro parts that are identical to this. They all work exactly the same on this particular vehicle. So we'll put those links in the description down in the video for Amazon. Just click on that link. You can buy that part and it will be exactly the same as this. It will wire up exactly the same. Everything will work identical to this. So we use Crux, we use Pack Audio, we also use Skosh, and we also use Metra. They all work almost identically the same. The only reason why we went with this is because this is what they had in stock and it's an all-in-one unit. So we'll show you how this works, but it's gonna work identical with all the other brands as well. One thing we have noticed about the 5500 and the 5600, the newer 5000 series, is it does have USB 1 and USB 2 on the rear, and it does have these brakes. The 5000, I believe, has the extensions off the back with no brakes, but they do only give you one extension. So you have two USBs, you need two extensions. So you will have to purchase a USB extension. I will put a link to that down in the description. We buy a bunch of them just so that we have extras to run for the customers, but you definitely want to extend both because you want to have access to both USBs. Here's what the antenna adapter will look like. I'll put the link down in the description below. Uh, you can click on that, go right to Amazon. It's a 40 EU 10. Um, it's basically a European style antenna adapter. And I'll put that link down below in the description for Amazon. So this is how you want to attach them basically with this little oval part on the top. And we're gonna attach those to the side of the unit. And here is the pieces installed. Just line up with the holes on the side. And you set this piece to sit right there on that ledge. Everything looks really good. I just hope it looks as good when we install it into the vehicle. That's always been the problem with these Jeeps is these things looking good when it's installed in the vehicle. So we'll see how this kit compares to all the rest of them that we've done. Do get two plugs. One's the more rounded, one's the more squared. We're gonna go out here. It's just a different of vehicles. I believe like 12 and under is one plug and then the 12 and up is the i think the rounded one is the 12 and up and the square one is the 12 and under but i just want to confirm i'm always one about making sure 100 percent see ours has got the rounded so it should just fit right into this rounded one right here yep it just slides right in so yeah that's what we want to go with is the more rounded one versus the squared one we plugged it into our module and then we're going to use this four pin right here because it is for a sony and pioneer we're going to plug this into the back for our steering wheel controls and then this will plug into the brain right here it says to set the dip switch settings like this so that's exactly what we did now we went ahead and plugged this bad boy into this plug right here and we wanted to plug it into the one that's labeled amplified so we can wire up our speakers to keep the factory amplification working so on new sony it says off on off so that's what we're gonna go to we're gonna switch that to off on off we're gonna switch it we have it backwards right now so on these newer Sony's it must be different we have everything wired up everything just matches color to color green gray purples your red your blue with white stripe yellow on the Sony's you just ground the mint color because that's the parking brake all these other ones we capped off I'm getting ready to zip tie this make it all look nice but it's very, very simple. You're not gonna use the reverse gear unless you're doing a backup camera or any of that stuff. So it's just basic, just basic colors like on any other car that you would wire up. Just wire all that together. I'm gonna zip tie it all together, make it look nice, plug it in, make sure everything works correctly. Everything is coming on like it's supposed to. We got sound coming out, steering wheel controls are working. Everything is working properly. Here's where you plug in your antenna adapter as well to the white one. You don't want to go to here. That's for the XM. And then this will just plug into the back of the radio into the antenna port. That's pretty much it. We're going to put everything in and show you what it looks like installed. One thing I'm noticing is this bar usually has to be cut on all the Metra kits, the Skosh kits. You have to cut this bar out. It's not allowing these screws to go up and push this straight up. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this bar out on both sides. We're just going to take our clippers and just cut it off completely because you have to do that on all the other kits. It doesn't say that in the instructions, but it is causing it not to be able to go up. So you definitely have to cut that out. I don't know why they didn't put that in the instructions. Maybe they just didn't realize it, or is this a new new part number, but we'll see. Went on my best cut job, but take this bad boy out. Just remove it, cut it out. Got it all mounted in there. After we cut this out, we have plenty of room. So I'll show you with the dash on and everything like that. Got the radio installed. Everything looks really good. Fitment on it is really good. I'm actually impressed with this dash kit. It, it does look really good, even though this is in the dark. I'll show you some in the light, but um, everything is fitting really good. Looks really good. Um, sound and up. Oh, um, that's switching our stations, and then our volume is going up. So that's awesome. So everything on our steering wheel controls is working. Oh, 
and it's even got a middle thing that changes sources. Didn't even know that. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so that's all working. I'm gonna check the USB ports. We put them over in the glove box, make sure all that's working, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like actually in the sun and you know how everything operates. So one thing I have found out, and I should have known better than this because they love to just not tell you this when you're wiring these up. I don't know why they just don't have it like this. So all these Chrysler, Dodge, Jeeps, everything, like I told you earlier, it only has four inputs, right? That's it, that's all that makes this system work. It's just an input into the amplifier. I wired it up collar to collar, rear to rear, front to front, thinking, okay, they've they've evolved into making this work because they know it's going onto a Jeep, but no. So basically what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to switch the fronts with the rears. So I'm gonna cut off and you only have to wire up the rears with the front input. So take the Sony front leads, which are white and gray, and wire them into the purple and green of the actual crux harness because if you don't do that the bluetooth only works through the front speakers i do not know why these companies have not just been like hey wire the front into this or wire it in like this so that it works that way but you know what i've seen dumber things so now i gotta rewire this because they don't specify that nor did they do it in the harness so fyi if you don't wonder why your bluetooth doesn't work it runs to the front your navigation works through the front speakers all this works through the front speakers and this only has four speaker inputs which are labeled as rear so when you run the rears you lose all your fronts so just remember that you have to wire the front inputs of the sony into the rear inputs of what this looks like but it's only just four inputs in so basically we took these rear inputs as you can see and we wired them into the front inputs so there's the whites and the grays wired into the purple and greens of this because that's the only inputs that go in right here is the purple and greens they should just redo this so that it's much easier for people to understand i don't know why they do this here's the uh, finished product out in the middle of the dark looks really good i'm going to show you guys tomorrow in the light i got it finished here is the installed product after we got all done i hope you guys can kind of see it during the bright sunny day versus the night so we didn't finish up till late so fits really good looks really good looks oem these double dens look super clean, comparable to some of the others that just look so aftermarket. These look more like OEM in stock, so really happy at the way it turned out. Thank <laughs> you.